Hi everyone, Andrew here for Adelie Reviews, and today we have an updated ship build for the Crate Mark II. Uh, so this is my Crate Mark II. I'll kind of do a quick little uh, little demonstration around it. It does have a, a different skin on it. I went with kind of a black, which is a bit of a theme for most of my ships. I do sort of like that look, especially on the Crate Mark II. It kind of has this almost like silver, kind of dark gray vibe. Uh, I also really like how if you whoo let's not get dizzy I like if you look at the front of the ship the pilot seat is actually kind of just below uh these these two vents here and all the good stuff kind of like that so i think that's really neat and then you have uh different guns that will come out on the sides uh let's go ahead and get inside the ship um so if we look at kind of my settings for my crate everything that i do is is fairly specific to um a little bit of combat, a little bit of exploration, um, for this particular ship at least. Uh, this is kind of my daily driver. Uh, it is sort of my, my one of my most favorite ships. Uh, and let me go ahead and go into Starport Services, and we'll kind of look at all the pieces that currently exist in my ship. I guess before that we can look at sort of livery. I'll show you the colors and all that jazz to kind of give you a better idea. It is a little bit bright in that station, uh, but we'll go ahead and, and check this out in a second. I guess we gotta wait until we get down under. There we are. Yep, so you can see here, uh, if we go to my crate, um, again, Mark II, go into the paint section, it is tactical graphite is the option I went with. I do think that looks pretty cool. Uh, and spoiler alert, I do have two onboard ships. They are also utilizing a darker tactical graphite as well. I think that looks really cool as kind of a nice pairing for the two. Uh, okay, let's go into the outfitting so we can talk about all the different settings. So from my perspective, I went with uh, beam lasers and multi cannons. I really like beam lasers for their damage output and the fact that they're necessarily, they're pretty much unlimited. I think that's very helpful. These are... 3C beam lasers, uh, and that is the highest tier I could get for beam lasers that are gimbaled on this ship. Now, that's kind of a key distinction, because if we were to go in here and say we wanted to buy some others, we go to beam lasers over here in the store. 3C is the highest you can get from a class rating perspective uh, when you're looking at um, beam lasers in the ship, because the uh, hard point allowment is class 3. You have three class three slots and then two class two slots. That's kind of easy to remember. Uh, I really like gimbaled weapons. I think they do a nice job of sort of staying on target. If you're not a very good shot or you're finding a hard time always keeping the, the center of your ship pointed at what you want to shoot at, I think gimbaled weapons kind of help take some of the edge off of flight. And I really do enjoy that. Outside of the beam lasers, I have the highest uh, grade gimbaled multi-cannon that I can have as well. And I do like the multi-cannon. I know some people really like the sort of shotgun approach. Uh, for me, I think the multi-cannon is kind of where it's at. It, it sort of sounds fun. It sounds cool to me. I like that Gatling gun sort of spinning up, which you can see on the right-hand side. And it's right off to the right and to the left of my ship when I'm sitting in there. And I think that's super cool. And it just, it seems neat. You might find that a lot of the options I make are either sort of high tier rated and then I kind of go for that cool factor because it's fun for me, right? This is a, a game after all. So you always want to make sure if you're going to do Elite Dangerous, the ship is just the tool, but you want to make sure you're having fun with whatever you're doing. Uh, if we go down into my utility mounts, uh, this is where I opted for just shield boosters the whole way. This is tricky uh, and, I, and I'll kind of touch on that a little bit. This is probably the most I usually get on any of my other ships. Shield boosters use a ton of power draw, or at least in my experience, uh, as you start to get into the other ships and you really start to fill them up, you'll usually have to swap a couple shield boosters out for something um, something else, like a, like a turret. Now, uh, if we go down from the utility mounts, we go to the core internals. I went with the reactive surface composite. So that does offer a bit of a trade-off, and it is A1 rated, because that is the, the class sort of one section here. Um, it does give you the hull boost. It does give you the 25% kinetic resistance. Thermal is negative 40, and then explosive resistance is positive 20, which explains why I gave the shields such a high boost with the utility of the shield boost, because we need to counter that. 
Uh, from there, we've got the 7A power plant. You could probably get away with going a little bit lower if you power manage and choose your different options. I personally do not necessarily worry about this ship trying to travel the entire galaxy really, really far and fast. It it works for me. You can even see here uh, my jump range is in the 15 light years. Pretty low for a non-engineered ship, of course. Uh, we will touch on how you can use non-engineered ships to get closer to like the 40 range and that kind of stuff, but that's later. For this, this is my ship to have fun. Um, go find some combat zones. Just get in there, have a good time. Uh, so that's what the power plant's doing. From there, same deal, thrusters, 6A. Uh, again, that sort of top tier version for the class. Uh, frame shift drive, 5A, same deal as well. I want to make sure I, I can have that, that sort of best jump range and that top tier version. Uh, this is kind of a, I would say, an interesting choice. I, I've often have people say, you should choose the cheaper, lighter weight, all that good stuff, life support. For me, I like the additional time. Uh, when I was first starting out in Elite Dangerous and I was doing a lot of little combat and high high resource, intense zones, all that kind of stuff, I often found my canopy was getting blown open. And having just five minutes to get back to get the ship fixed wasn't really fun for me. Now, of course, uh, you should always be able to pay for your rebuy cost. And you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, my insurance rebuy cost is 12 million. I still like to play like the money is important and it's not that i'm at uh whatever the amount is in my top right which is around like 2.3 billion or whatever i still think it's fun to play like this ship matters to you and you don't want to just throw it away so i like that extra race back it's like its own little mini game if my i only have 25 minutes i got to get back a uh, power distribution same deal 7a uh really really went for that top tier version uh wanted to have all those extra pieces the benefits here actually is the recharge rates are super helpful. So I find that to be great. Uh, sensors, 6A. To be honest, I rarely have sat down to check the major differences, but I always want to make sure I get that better angle and we can scan all those people. Uh, finally, the fuel tank is stock. You can't put a bigger one in for the defaults. So it is what it is. 32 is pretty great though. I, I find that does solve most of my problems. Uh, once we get into optional internals, this personally, in my opinion, is where the fun pieces come. You, obviously, you, go, you choose your weapons, you choose your uh, utilities, but the optional internals is where you can really make the ship catered to what you are of interest. Uh, so right off the door, I do want to always sort of stress, I like to have a shield generator that's at the tippity top. So uh, class 6 shield generator, 6A. Uh, so this is just a standard shield generator. You do have other options here. So if we were to sort of look at other types of shield generators, if we so, sort of scroll down, um, you can see here, uh, let's open that up. There is the bi-weave ones as well. Essentially what you're kind of doing here is it's going to recharge faster and it does use a little bit less. I think they're actually really good. Um, I do like the... The bi-weave shield, I think they look neat. And of course, again, this is non-engineered, non non-guardian, all that good stuff. Um, but essentially, this one does sacrifice overall shield strength for a much faster recharge. That's probably the route I will eventually move into. But at this point in time, I really like that additional uh, sort of strength. You can see here, my optimal strength is at that 120%. And if we go to the right and go down, we lose about 90%, uh, which is kind of key. I, I think that's a bit rough, but it does still keep all the same resistances, 40% kinetic, minus 20% thermal, explosive resistance as uh, set for 50%. So all those same deals are sitting nice and well. It's really when you start to go kind of into that power draw, like it's dramatic how much this shield generator uses versus the bi-weave. So again, if you are trying to sort of manage these different pieces, it's probably the play to make. But I, I still prefer, because um, I'm not the best pilot yet, so I like to make sure my ship can take some of those hits. Uh, let's get back in here. Uh, and then, uh, because I do like to play with friends, and I also like to have my crew, uh, specifically the NPC crew, which we've done a video on, um, but essentially I like having those other ships. I think that's a lot of fun, and I like to have a lot of them. Uh, so that's where we have our fighter hangar here. And we get uh, two sets of them, which is really awesome. Uh, I like that. I, I You choose your sort of level and tier. I went with the six uh, for that. So I can have the most amount of ships inside my ship at a time. Really makes combat fun when you've got that NPC fighting with you. 
And then of course, uh, hull reinforcement package. Uh, obviously our shields can only take so much, so you wanna have that hull reinforcement package and we do that sort of through our class fives. And that is the highest tier you can get for hull reinforcement, again, as, as standard. And then uh, module reinforcement, I always think that's important too. Your stuff is gonna get targeted. You do wanna try to protect it for as much time as you can, but if somebody does wanna go after you, they will go after it. Uh, and then a shield cell bank. So this is super helpful. If your shield is starting to get down and you want to give it like a boost, right? You're in that. The sort of closest analogy I have is imagine you're on a train before the fire's out. If you throw more coal in there, it's going to increase that fire. We've all probably seen those, Anna, those fun cartoons and stuff. That's what a shield cell bank does. It gives you a few of them. This has a maximum of three, which is awesome. Uh, I, I think four, actually, now that I say that. There's one in the chamber and then two addition, three additional. Either way, um, we'll get in there and kind of show it. But essentially, this thing right here, if my shields get down to like the 20%, I'll switch over to my shield cell bank, trigger that thing, and get kind of a boost to try to bump the shield back into that 50% range. Uh, and then sort of our final four items. And we're going to start right here at the end of the line. So... I would say never leave home without it. You don't want to get trapped out there in the stars. You never know what you might want to counter encounter. You have a mission that sends you far away. Uh, fuel scoop. The fuel scoop is exactly what it does. It allows you to scoop fuel from the sun so you don't have to keep a massive fuel tank. You can just travel by the stars. Uh, advanced docking computer. I personally never leave home without advanced docking computer and the super cruise assist. These two things here, um, I'm sure I'm going to get a little bit of flack for these. I think they're helpful. We are in the future. I shouldn't have to dock my ship. And if I wanted to, I should be able to turn on the barest of minimums, which is essentially cruise control for this. Uh, the advanced docking computer essentially allows you to get in and out of space stations uh, without having to do it yourself. And then the super cruise assist is the same deal. It lets you sort of pick a target and then just stay in that space lane. It'll do all the fun stuff. Now it will not do everything. It won't dodge things. Uh, it is essentially cruise control but I still think it is uh, beneficial to me. So that's why you do see these here. You probably could see a lot of things online that say put something else in this space. I don't get as excited anymore for docking. I think it's kind of tedious. Um, it kind of gets in the way of the fun that is personally for me. Again, have fun how you want to have fun. No one's going to tell you that you're having fun wrong. Uh, it is entirely your game to play. So don't feel bad. Uh, if you're like me, you like this. If you don't, you're like, never. That's not, that's part of the immersion for me. That's awesome. I think that's super cool. It was for me for a very long time. And when I usually get into VR, I'll sometimes uh, turn it off too. So I understand. Uh, just, you know, you're in the middle of stuff. It's a nice time to take a drink of water, uh, step away for a hot second as you're docking. So I always mind it. Um, I have run into maybe a handful of like maybe one or 2% of the time. Maybe it gets stuck or it adds quirks. I think my success rate is lower. Uh, so I would probably have more problems if I did it myself. That's my thoughts there. A little spiel. Thanks to my TED Talk. Finally, of course, here are my, my two fighters. And you can mix them up. You don't have to have them be the same type of ship. But I do because I don't want to have to try to remember what one is, what the other is. So I have two um, 60 fighters. Uh, six, the Sorry, level 6D fighter hangar. There are two ships in it for a grand total of 16 ships. So you have one slot which has eight and another slot which has eight. And what it essentially does is it manufactures them. If they break, it makes another one for you. Uh, these both have gimbaled beam lasers on them and then a heat sink so they don't overheat. They are fun little ships. They are truly fun to fly around in. If you ever get a chance, even if it's just for fun, get that a shot, you're gonna have a great time. Uh, that concludes sort of our modules and all the fun stuff we have on our ship, but that is not the end all be all of everything. You also have power management. So if we go over here to our, well, actually yeah, we're on fire groups. We'll start there. For me, I set up my fire groups in sort of two sets. All of the beam lasers are in that group A and they're essentially all on my right trigger of my, my controller. And then all of my multi cannons are in the left trigger, but they're all active at the exact same time, which is really nice because I can cycle between them without having to actually cycle between them. They're just both out and active. One trigger is one, the other trigger is the other, and they are all, of course, gimbaled. Then we switch to a different fire group to be able to trigger our shield cell bank. Remember, the shield cell bank is what allows your shield to recharge. Uh, I will caveat this, though. If you get to zero, your shield cell bank will be no good to you. You have to wait for it to at least begin. It has to be an active shield to be able to work. Uh, 
But either way, that's how I set up my fire groups. Super helpful. I really enjoy it. You've seen you've seen this channel before. You can find plenty of videos of me flying the ship in that sort of formation. Uh, modules. This is where it's fun. So uh, I do have some power management happening here. You can't see it because uh, it's a, pretty much a rounding error, but essentially the output is at 100% and the usage is at 100%. The usage is actually at like 100 0.1%. And I will uh, upload the ship build and all the settings into the Coriolis uh, ship builder, and I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go to this exact ship build as well. Uh, but essentially, you have your thrusters, and this is sort of how I build all of my, my sort of my, my ships. If it's sort of that core option, it's going to be priority one. Thrusters, you're going to need them. Shield generator, I think it's quite important, so I put that as a one. Uh, my weapons will often be in a two or a three, depending on how I'm doing my power management. Uh, so beam lasers are all priority two. Uh, sensors, got to have those to navigate, so that's one. Uh, shield cell bank, I put that in sort of the fire group space, so that's just the same as a weapon. Uh, so that's a two. Sometimes I will pop those around, but I do think those are important enough to keep active at all times. My shield boosters, uh, I think there's a world where you could probably reverse this and you put the weapons to three and the shield boosters to two. Um, for this particular instance, I decided to do it the opposite way where I wanted to stay in the fight, even if the boosters were to go offline. Uh, and then of course, the power distributor. Uh, I need the power to be distributed at all times, so that's a one. Life support, can't go too far without that. And uh, then we get back to our weapons again. So two multi-cannons, those are at priority group two. Uh, finally, cargo hatch. Really, I don't do that much with the cargo hatch, so it's a it's a three. This ship is not hauling cargo, so you can put it wherever you want uh, at the very end if you'd really like. It's pretty negligible in terms of power level. Uh, frame shift drive. So this is where that distinction comes in. So again, if my weapons were to go to three, the frame shift drive would switch to a two. Uh, basically, the intention here is you're never going to be able to use your frame shift drive at the same time as your weapons. I'm sure you've had your guns out, and it's like you, your modules are out, your hard points are out. Uh, that's because you cannot do that. So putting them on the same priority level doesn't do you any good. It always makes sense to have them be separate. So that's where the frame shift drive is at that three. And then, of course, the fuel scoop, which actually I forgot. I had just recently updated it, and it has no business being at a one. It actually could be at a four. Uh, so we're going to put that there now. Advanced docking computer, again, at that level four. Because, again, it will not be active while I'm doing any of the other things. But I do think it's important if we ever were to lose power at that tier four, I still want to be able to jump away. That's why it's not on the same level as the frame shift drive. Uh, from there, the fighter hangar, kind of a weapon type thing. So that's a two again. We're having some fun there. Uh, Super cruise assist gets put into the four. Uh, again, once I'm in space, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not the same as the weapons. But it's I don't want it using power as I'm fighting, so I want that to turn off as things are happening. Uh, from there, we have our cockpit canopy, and everything else just stays off. Overall, I think I could tweak these a bit more uh, to kind of sort of set it up to the way that I think I would like it, but everything does work really well here. And I'll kind of give you an example. Let's go ahead and auto-launch, and we'll get out into space, and I'll kind of show you what happens when we turn our power on. Oh yeah, here we go. And this is another one of those pieces where I can sit here and talk to you fine folks. And auto launch and all those good things are just going to happen. I don't have to sit here and kind of do it. Now it is fun and I will say coming in and out of stations is always kind of awe-inspiring to me. You, that The darkness of space, the brightness of the station. That distinction coming in or going out is always really fun. Oh my gosh, look at our friend. The Beluga Liner. Those things are just ridiculous. Let's uh, let's sort of switch away here so we can see the size difference. Whew. Look at them. That's a that's a beast. Those are those are cool looking ships. I always like to see those things. I think they uh, they just look fun. I, I don't own any of the those type of ships. They always look like whales to me um but i think they're really kind of neat look that's fun all right looks like it's our turn to leave this is perfect once we get out of here we will uh we'll turn on our our hard points kind of give an example of what i'm referencing 
Ooh, here we go. We'll follow this Type 9 out the door. And it's always fun to kind of just boost away. Oh, I love that sound. I'm, I'm sure you can pick it up on um, the audio in the back, but if not, turn your audio up just for a second. Okay, you can turn it back down now. Um, I love that. I don't. I don't know what it is. It just sounds so distinct from everything else. All right, so let's go ahead and go. we've left the fire zone. We can slow down. Boom! We've just put our hard points out, and you can see we are out of range. Nothing's in front of us, and we've just gotten that message: power limit exceeded. Uh, we can now see our turrets are even out here on sides. If we look over here. We go to our fire groups, uh, I'm sorry, our modules, and we scroll down, we can see what is getting turned off. Right now, it is again fuel scoop, advanced docking computer, and super cruise assist. Nothing that needs to be on while we are in a fight. So, not a big deal. They can just stay right there. Not a problem at all, which is great. That way, all of these things are going to stay working and everything's going to work. I can go down, I can launch my ship, all that good stuff, and everything just works without having to have any power issues. So, I really like that. I think it's helpful. Again, um, I think you could switch those pieces around if you really wanted to. Uh, I still would probably recommend putting some of these pieces, Super Cruise Assist, all that good stuff, in the four or five category, keeping your sort of weapons, your escape stuff, like the frame shift drive, your protection like the uh, shield boosters keep those things all in sort of separate modules and really just prioritize as a number one your thrusters your shield generators uh sensors like that sort of core core stuff and the, and the really nice is elite kind of does that for you right when we were looking through all the modules everybody was kind of in little buckets you have your utilities you have your optional stuff all those things can all be in different buckets it works out really well for this ship yeah, um, if you have any questions, uh, we'll do one more little view just to kind of see the ship out in space. I think it's pretty. Kind of gives me like a Batmobile sort of vibe when it's all black like this. But there are some really cool paint jobs out there. Um, so in any case, I hope this was fun. I hope this was interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have a different build, I'd love to see that too. I really do think this is a cool ship. So if, if you have any, um, any cool way you want to show yours off in the comments, let us know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for stopping by, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.